We begin today's show with major updates in the fight by Native Americans to stop the proposed $3.8 billion Dakota Access Pipeline, which would carry about 500,000 barrels of crude oil a day from the Bakken oil fields of North Dakota through South Dakota, Iowa and into Illinois. The project has faced months of resistance from the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe and members of hundreds of other tribes from across the United States and Canada, who flocked to North Dakota. Dakota in what's being described as the largest unification of Native American tribes in decades. In a dramatic series of moves late Friday afternoon, a federal judge rejected the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe's request for an injunction against the U.S. government over the Dakota Access Pipeline. Then the Army, the Department of Justice, and the Department of the Interior responded with a joint announcement that the Army Corps will not issue permits for Dakota Access to drill under the Missouri River until the Army Corps reconsiders its previously issued permits. In a statement, the Department of Justice said, quote, construction of the pipeline on Army Corps land bordering or under Lake Wahe will not go forward at this time, unquote. The federal agencies also asked the Dakota Access Pipeline Company to voluntarily cease construction 20 miles east and west of Lake Wahe. The government's intervention was welcomed by thousands of Native Americans who've gathered along the Cannonball River by the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation to resist the pipeline's construction. Here are some of their reactions. Francine Garrow Hall, I'm with the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. I'm uh, Minikoju, Itazipjo, and Hunkpapa bands of the Teton Lakota. I am very grateful because in our government-to-government -government relationship, the federal government is bound by treaty law to protect our interests. And I'm glad that they stepped up to the plate today and, and did that. I think all the American people need to recognize and they need to realize that this isn't a racial deal. This is something that impacts all of us. We all, as children of God, have a right to clean water. And that's what this fight is about. It's about recognizing that Mini Wichoni, water is life, and without it, we, are, we all die. And so we are protecting water for the future generations. Um, I had to be here because I wanted, it was my time to be accountable. Seven generations from now, I want my grandkids and their children to say, she stood so that we could have clean water. My name is Bill Peacott. I'm a member of the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. Like everybody else, I think I'm pretty happy with the decision for them to step in. I know that maybe it's not the end of the battle, but at least today, you know, we, we celebrate a small victory. Um, you know, there are still things to be considered, and um, I, I think at least for me, it appears that they want to do things fairly. Hopefully, there'll be more consul tribal consultation, and not just with Standing Rock, but with all, all tribal nations in the future. Maybe this will show, you know, the United States and the world that uh, I think Native American people are tired of being walked on, tired of being taken for granted, tired of being invisible, and uh, that we're going to stand up for ourselves. I've seen some atrocious things to me, you know. The girl that was bit in the chest was my cousin, you know, and uh, um, there were pictures on Facebook of that, and I was, I was heartbroken for her, you know. I think I can say that I'm proud of the way we've behaved and how we've acted throughout this. Floris White Bull from Standing Rock. My father's from here, Standing Rock. I'm a student at Sitting Bull College. It's not a solid victory right now, but it's uh, just the weight, feeling that that weight that I've been carrying for the past couple months now, it's lifting. and. Uh, I feel like I could breathe right now.
The Native Americans, who call themselves protectors, not protesters, have repeatedly forced the Dakota Access Pipeline Company to stop construction by locking themselves to machinery. On Saturday, September 3rd, over Labor Day weekend, Dakota Access Pipeline Company unleashed dogs and pepper spray on Native Americans as they attempted to stop the company from destroying a sacred tribal burial site. These people are just we're threatening all of us with them, these dogs. And she, that woman over there, she was charging them and it bit somebody right in the face. The dog has blood in its nose and its mouth. And she's still standing here threatening. You can't get out! Why are you letting their her dog go after the protesters? It's covered in blood. That was September 3rd. To see our full report, go to democracynow.org. The bulldozers and company security guards were ultimately forced to retreat.